champion Dennis Galvin. Not only did he beat him, but he beat him inside the distance. And he became quite a big name in amateur boxing in Ireland almost overnight. He's still at the learning stage. But so far, he's dictating this contest here. Jason Matthews hasn't offered an awful lot. He's been on the retreat, pedaling away, almost throughout the first round. And here on the second round, Jason Matthews doesn't look as if he's going to come forward an awful lot now either. Danny Ryan would like to have a harder contest here, perhaps. He's getting to loosen up now. He's trying to pin this man down, but he's finding Matthews a slippery customer who slides along the ropes. We've been checked there for holding with her in close. No reply from Matthews. And Matthews looks as if his ambition is to stay the three rounds. Well, that's all. And Ryan. Trying to loosen him up. Scoring every so often. He's the more positive of the two. Well, I suppose he can be happy enough. good right hand eventually he gets through with one big right hand hit him once with the right that second one was a good hefty right hand referee giving him a standing count and there's a little bit of trouble there is there it's closer look slight cut there seems to be some blood or above his eye there I don't know how that came about Referee says it's all right to box on. With the headgear, it's difficult to see these injuries sometimes. Well, he's trying to fight his way back. But Ryan looks to be the boss in this second round. He was caught with two reasonably good right hands. The second one had a fair bit of weight behind it. Short with the punches this time. And there's the end. The end of the second round, and it's a weary Jason Matthews back to his corner. Third and final round. Well, it's the last round of the middleweight contest. Jason Matthews from England forced to take account of that second round, and here's Danny Ryan, the new star of Irish international boxing at middleweight. Danny Ryan from Raffle and County Donegal. Hasn't been a great contest. Most of the hard work has been coming from Ryan. And as I say that, there's one of the best punches he's thrown so far from Matthews. Scored with one chopping right hand. Matthews has been very negative in his boxing almost throughout. And therefore, the first time, his corner must have told him get out there and do some work early on. He was a bit positive for the first time. But there he's back to chasing away again, moving away, short with those punches. Ryan seeking all the time to land one big punch. Very hard puncher. Ryan, the Irish champion at middleweight. Very strong and promising young boxer. This is the start of the season. It's going to be interesting to see how he develops throughout this season of amateur boxing. He is just a little bit more experienced. And he's getting it here tonight against a more experienced boxer in Jason Matthews. Matthews, London champion, number one in England. Has been on the international scene for a few years now. Lost against Dennis Galvin last year in the same international. And there he's beginning to find his range with a few jabbing left hands. And he's beginning to gain a bit of confidence in this last round as he dances away. But that will take a bit of the confidence out of him. Well, Ryan looked all business in the opening round. Maybe he's concentrating a little bit too much on landing a big punch. He's certainly going for the big one all the time. Well, this is the last round. There's more life in Matthews in this last round than it was in the whole first two rounds. Oh, 
Well, Ryan may be a bit disappointed here that he didn't put this fellow away. And here's Matthews replying with a few sharp punches there. Ryan unable to take control completely in this last round. He had the fight going his way for the first couple of rounds. But Matthews all the time able to wriggle away. And there's the end of the last round. The winner of that contest by nine points to four in the red corner for Ireland. Yes, Danny Ryan, clear cut winner. Well, this is the last round of the heavyweight contest in this Ireland-England match. Paul Douglas is our man here, the red singlet, and Steve Burford. Burford at 23 is a fairly promising young heavyweight from England, British Services champion. Dropped out of boxing for a while and then came back last year. He's only into senior boxing since last year's championships in Britain where he was runner-up. Whereas Paul Douglas, well, he's... Ten years of senior boxing behind him. One of the most experienced boxers in the country. Takes a hard right hand and then comes back. He walks through punches, Paul Douglas. They don't seem to upset him at all. Never knows how to back off. He'll come forward all the time. On this fellow Burford, fairly smart fellow, he's landed a few good ones and he must begin to wonder what you to do to stop Douglas because Douglas will still come forward, shuffling in. And again Burford picks him off, but Douglas still won't give ground. Douglas not punching correctly now this last round. That was a bit better, that left hand. This is typical of Paul Douglas. Just when you think he's beginning to fade in the contest, he gets energy from somewhere and comes forward again. Because he's taken a few hard wallops at the start of this round. I feel now Douglas has punched himself out of this stage. He'll still throw them out. Well, he still didn't back off. Well, what a punch, a cracking punch. Many a heavyweight would have been dropped to the canvas with that. But Douglas just does not know the meaning of backing off or coming going backwards he has to come forward and Burford has picked him off with some really good punches in this last round come on, Paul, let it go. and this has been a grueling battle they've taken a lot of punches all the way through and they'll certainly know they were in a scrap tonight a tough grueling heavyweight fight Yes, Paul Douglas taking a bit of a stinger in the last round there, losing that one by 10-9. Uh, Mick Darling, of course, we remember Paul from the Olympics last year. Since then, he lost a decision against England in Liverpool and beaten again, although narrowly last night. Yeah, narrowly beaten last night. Now, he was very, very unfortunate last year. Uh, I think it was about July. He was very unfortunate to lose out there. But uh, last night, he, while it was close on the scoring, now, the English coach felt that it should have been much wider mm -hmm. because Paul was just plodding forward all the time and didn't seem to be able to get out of the way of punches. And I thought there in the third round that he got a little too cocky, dropped his hands and started throwing some shapes and got nailed with a good right hand. And I thought the writing was on the wall a little bit earlier because he got caught with two good right hands just previous to that big one. Yeah, he was trying to look sort of cool and confident in the last round, but as Noel Andrews said, he'd really punched himself out and he had nothing left to give. 
Well, in the third round, when you start getting tired, I mean, that's when the real danger is there. And Burford was, was very, very good, long, rangy boxer, good long jab, and had a good right hand. Was also able to hook very well as Douglas came at him. He was able to throw lovely left hooks and just slip out of the way. And from the very, very start, Paul was plodding forward, but was always finding it difficult to get on target with his own big shots. Let's look at the previous fight that we saw there, uh, Danny Ryan. Now, he's a newcomer, I suppose, to the Irish signet, but having said that, he is the reigning Irish middleweight champion, so obviously a very useful boxer. Yeah, Danny had a tremendous win in the National Seniors last year when he, he dumped Dennis Galvin in, in around the second round with a beautiful left hook. Now, he's had a good career since. He's been in the States and he's, uh, he's had some good opposition. His boxing is good, good class. But uh, last night, he really fell asleep in the first round. Mm. We saw him there in rounds two and three, but his first round was disastrous last night. Mm. He was just stalking his man and doing nothing. But he, he woke up to the task and uh, performed very well afterwards. What about his future, the Irish Signet? He's got a good future. I know at the moment uh, he, they, they would love to get a, a roof on the gymnasium up there. It's been lying for two years now without any, any roof on it. But he, if he's going to improve, he needs to start throwing in more jabs. If you've if you got a chance to study his fight again, there he throws a huge amount of hooks and hardly ever jabs. Mm -hmm. He must get his jab on target mm -hmm. because a jab is a very, very basic punch of boxing. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that. OK, well, Danny Ryan winning last night, but a roof and raffo, please. All right, our next action from last night's international at the stadium, we're going to look at two of the younger boxers on the Irish team. Flyweight Damien McKenna, who was making his debut for Ireland against the England number two, Stephen Parry. That's in a few minutes. But first, we have Patrick Dean from the Ballina Boxing Club in County Mayo against Paul Watts from Hartlepool. Now, Dean was a highly regarded boxer last season at intermediate level, and he made a winning start last night in the senior grade with the best action coming in round one. Pat Dean in red here from Swinford. His opponent here is Paul Watts. Uh, these, neither of these boxers were the original choice. We had a couple of uh, top class light heavyweights lined up for this international, but England were unable to find opponents. And then when they did find a light heavyweight willing to box, well, they didn't like the looks of uh, ours because our two were top liners. And so, we're trying out a new boxer, as it were, here in Pat Dean. Pat Dean was very impressive in the intermediate championships here. As a heavyweight, in fact, he was in a very exciting heavyweight con contest here in the finals. He's also been Irish champion in underage boxing twice. So he's a fair bit of experience, Pat Dean, in underage boxing from Swinford. Paul Watts. Home County's champion. And this was penciled in in the last minute of this contest. And Pat Dean, who's been used to boxing by heavier heavy weights, he's uh, should have an advantage here in power. And he's sinking in those left hands to the body. And he's going, really going to try and win this inside the distance here. He's decided to concentrate on that left hook to the body. Now, a lot of those punches have been blocked by his opponent's elbow, but he still get, did get through with a few good ones. And he gets a lot of power behind them, whips it to the body and then to the head. That's a lovely combination. It's one you don't often see. Left to the body and then switch it to the head. He's working off that left hook. Now there's a standing count in this first round for Paul Watts. And Dean is really putting on the pressure in this opening round. We may have a very promising big man here in amateur boxing in Pat Dean. He's certainly impressed in the intermediate championships. And there's standing count once again. And it's becoming a bit one-sided now, towards the end of this, the first round. The referee says box on, and there's the end of the round. And I don't think that fellow is so happy going back after those three minutes of punishment from this newcomer to international boxing. Uh, final round. 
round. Well, the final round on the right there is Damian McKenna. Going out for the third and final round, all important round because it's a close enough contest, this one. Damian McKenna, at long range, he's the better of the two, I think, but he's not coming forward enough. Could be a little bit more positive in his boxing gear against this tough customer in Steve Parry. Parry, with an aging experience here. Strong southpaw, well built. Punches hard, but not all that accurate. And trying to slap a bit the inside of the glove. He still gets a lot of weight behind him. McKenna has been crisp with his boxing, tidy with his boxing. He's got to tighten his defense just that little bit more. And Perry looks as if he's going for it in this last round. He's coming forward. Uh, the Irishman McKenna has got to pick him off here. That's more like it. A good crisp left hand of the face. This one is made for the left hand jab. And this could be the deciding round. A close enough contest, this one. And McKenna certainly looking impressive in this, his opening contest in international boxing. And this is the start of the season. Only recently graduated from junior and intermediate boxing. And here he is now as a fully fledged senior, holding his own well against a more experienced Steve Parry from England. And McKenna has kept his cool throughout, kept his boxing fairly tidy. Perhaps he should have been a little bit more positive at times. That's more like it. He whips in a really good looping left hand. That caught his man and caught his man well. That was a well-placed punch there from Damien McKenna. McKenna from Drogheda. Damien, whose father Christie is in his corner. Tonight, he himself, a former international in amateur boxing, the trainer and coach of the Johada boxing team. McKenna bleeding from the nose. That's been giving him trouble for the last couple of rounds. There's the end, and it's really warmed up at the final round of quite an enjoyable contest. Yes, the Englishman just too strong for McKenna there. He won by 10-7 on the computer scoring system. And Patrick Dean beat Paul Watts by 16-7 in a very impressive debut. And I know, Mick Dowling, that you have been very impressed by him as well. well one of the, the uh, outstanding things about young Dean is that he's a, he's a good, very good body puncher. And we don't see an awful lot of body punching in amateur boxing. Very often, maybe the boys are not allowed work inside. Patrick Dean really worked on the body. You might even call it the bread basket because he, is a, he works in a bakery. I so they he, call him he Pat the baker. Pat <laughs> <laughs> so he certainly ha has a liking for body punching. Yeah. But to he would need to steady up on those, step back a little bit, give himself a little bit of room, and pick his punches a bit better on the inside. Mm -hmm. But he works very, very well, and he moves pretty well as well. Making your debut in any sport, obviously it's a step up, you know, so that there is ground to sort of make up there, and it's a learning experience, of course. Well, I suppose it's like in any sport, you know, it's like in hurling or football, it's a, it's a step from intermediate up yeah. into senior level, and it is a big jump. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, he was very impressive last year in the intermediate championships, mm -hmm. he won a tremendous final, but uh, he's made the transition very well. Now, the contest was made for him. The yeah. boy he was boxing was 21 years old, but he was a well-built boy. Sure, yeah. So, uh, well done to Patrick Dean. And I think he's going to be in action now against Wales in about yeah. three weeks' time as well. Uh, Damien McKenna also making his debut last night. Things didn't go his way on this occasion, though. Well, Damien has boxed uh, for Ireland at underage level yeah. on a good number of occasions, uh, even in the European Championships at underage level. But uh, he needs more power. He's the most, one of the most skillful boxers on the team, one of the best balanced fighters, can box either way, left hand, turn southpaw, and boxes extremely well. But what he lacks is power. 
and I'm sure his dad, Christian McKenna, his coach, knows that, and he should really work on that for a how's solid How is he going to work on that now? How is he going to build up that kind of power? Well, you, you can always build only a certain amount of power. We've spoken about this with Wayne McCulley. You, you know, either you're a hitter or you're not a hitter, yeah. but he needs to de develop a little more power. He could do that by going on a good course of... of weight training and also by his dad Christy mm -hmm. teaching him how to transfer his weight fast and sharp from one foot to the other yeah one leg to the other with a very sharp snap that's mm -hmm. where you get power good all right Mick we're going to take a break now but uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with more boxings before we go to the break I mentioned again of the number of phone calls we've been having about the Rangers Celtic match now we had had plans to show you this this afternoon unfortunately the Scottish FA refused his permission for the match so uh, apologies Neil Goff He's quite uh, an experienced international boxer, Irish champion, boxed in the Olympic trials, toured America, also won underage youth champion. Santini, former British ABA champion, Failed last year in the championships, but the season before he was champion. Oh, a nice move by Santini, the way he moved his punches to the body that time as Buff came forward. Santini looks smart in this first round. Goff won't like that left hand lead. You've got to loosen up this fellow a little bit. So far, Santini looks a bit too comfortable. Goff is quite a good all rounder. He punches reasonably well. Well to wait, he's in a busy weight division too. Beat Eddie Fisher in the final last year. Man who had beaten him the year before. <laughs> this being the first international of the season too, it's always difficult to gauge as to what form the boxers are in after the lay off for a lot of the English boxers well they've been competing and some of the Irish ones too although they're not on tonight <coughs> have been competing in the European Championships <laughs> the end of the first round and it's open to anyone so far in this contest Second up. Round two. Second round. Neil Goff. This welterweight international bout, Ireland, England. For England is Mark Santini. Santini from Birmingham. There's not an awful lot between these two. The first round was calm enough. Santini started the round well with some nice accurate boxing. And then seemed to go a little bit astray. And Goff began to bustle him a bit. Now that's the way Goff can win if he stays the pressure. He must keep the pressure on this fellow because Santini is a smart boxer. He's got to use the ring well and snap out a fairly useful left hand jab and scores well there's a right long right hand from San Santini now Goff mustn't allow him steel punches like that he's got to get in and loosen him up a little bit it's 
Santini will try and use the centre of the ring and keep this man at the end of a long left hand. He also whips in a good left hook to the body from time to time. Again, he flounders, caught with that left hand. And Goff certainly having his hands full in this second round. And if this contest stays at long range, Santini is going to win it because he's a comfortable boxer at long range. Goff has got to catch him against the ropes or in the corner, but he can hold him in one spot. because he's never going to outsmart this fellow at long range. But again, Santini picks him off with the long right hand this time. And there's damage to the eye there. It's difficult to see with the headgear how bad it is. He's calling for a second opinion. He wants the doctor to have a closer look there. Be a pity now if it has to be stopped for that reason. No, he says it's all right. Well, the crowd behind Gov. But Santini is a smart one. Smart and comfortable. There's the end of the second round. And this fellow's beginning to look fairly tasty at the end of that second round. Well, this is the last round. Oh, this is Neil Goff for Ireland. And it could be a bit of an uphill battle for him now in this last round against Mark Santini. And Santini has been picking him off with some useful long-range punches every so often. And Goff his only chance here, he's got to put on pressure on this fellow and try and upset his rhythm and get close with some of those shorter punches. He's out of range with those big right hands, Goff. He's got to land one or two to try and slow this fellow down. Because Santini has looked the more comfortable of the two. The opening round, Santini started well. Then Goff began to get to him. But the second round, Santini looked the more smooth. At this stage, he's more than likely ahead on points. But Goff could still do something here. Uh, has been checked there for doing a little bit of pulling and holding in close. Goff looking for an opening. Whips in one good left hand. But he's got to stay there. That's more like it. Not stand back. He must stay in close. He must stay in close and not give this fellow room to maneuver those long punches. Well, he's putting everything into this last round. The crowd sense it. And if he can really do his stuff now in this last round, he could win it. As he went into the round behind on points, I should think. Now he's got to keep up those. Got to keep up those attacks. Get those points up on the board. But there's Santini stealing a few again. Santini, an accurate, good, clean boxer. And as the boxing gets a bit untidy, that could suit Goff. Now, as he left it too late, he's had a reasonably good last round, started it well, and there he's got a final chance, and he scores again. Well, there's no doubt about it, Goff is putting out the work of this last round. Part of it told to keep quiet. And there's a good right hand 
and that could be the deciding punch in this co contest it's so close now because he's having a good last round Neil Goff and there's the bell And what an exciting fight that was, and the closest one of the night. The computer couldn't separate them. It was 9 all there. And on the count back, Goff just edged it by 36 to 35. And that's just about as close as you can get, Mick. It was very close. And, you know, when we, we try to compare now the, maybe the old scoring system with the new system, yeah. uh, if it had been on the, uh, with the old system, Neil Goff would probably have lost that last night because he spent two rounds doing something that just wasn't working. Right. Uh, he was trying to box the boxer and that didn't work and it took him two rounds to realize that he really had to get in there and fight this guy and upset him and that's what he did there in the third round I but he, he was behind going into the third well behind in fact yeah i gathered the english weren't too happy afterwards they felt their man should have won i spoke to terry edwards and he couldn't believe that decision it was yeah. uh, it was quite quite uh, he felt that they they were clear winner but the scoring was interesting that the first round was 6-1 in favor of santini the second round it went 9-2 in favour of Santini. Yeah. So you can see he was well ahead going into the third round. Goff had a very, very good last round and evened up the score at 9-9, which means Santini didn't score at all in the third. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Goff scored seven points. Mm -hmm. Goff got so the decision at the end, you I got it. They, they, That's all that counts? Yeah, they did yeah. a count back, which of course they eliminate the top score, they eliminate the bottom score, take the middle three, Goff got it by one single point. Good. All right, Mick, we'll talk to you a little bit later on, but we're going to take a commercial break now, but coming up, after that, we have racing for you. Southpaw, all right there. Anxious to win this one. He's boxed against England before. In fact, he's one of the few boxers who won three times against England, the international boxer. So he wants to keep his clean sheet here. And he wants to really impress the selectors too because he lost his Irish title last year and has been more or less demoted to number two. And he wants to be number one. Number one middleweight in Ireland. Dave Starley. Dave Starley for England. Only 19. Only recently moved up to the middleweight division. He's looked upon as one of the most promising boxers in England right now. Galvin, very popular with the crowd here. Mainly by virtue of the fact that he's such a big, heavy puncher. He's won an awful lot of contests inside the distance. He hasn't been able to nail this man as yet. Had about a few good ones in the opening round, but Starry seemed to be able to take them. Smart move there from Starry. Moves inside and moves away. Well, this is not a good round so far for Dennis Galvin. Starry is beginning to decide the pace in this now, keeping the centre of the ring. There's the big punch all the time for Galvin. Galvin's got to land with one big punch and turn the contest round. That's what makes him so popular with the crowd. Starry is still able to take it. Now all the punching power of Galvin see him through in this one. This is the start of this round. Starry was building up a points lead, but now Galvin is getting back into it. Starry beginning to show a little bit of respect there. I think he cut a few hard ones there and he's beginning to wonder what this fellow Galvin is made of. <laughs> End of the second round. And certainly Starry looks as if he uh, began to feel the effect of those punches at the end of that round. Dennis Galvin, 
One of the most popular boxers here in the stadium. They certainly get the money's worth when he gets in. He's brave, he's game, and he's a big hitter. English man be checked there for don't give it a folding. They each land that time. Galvin's boxing it, becoming a bit untidy in this last round. He's got to get out of that corner. He's got to try and force this man back, push him back. Show him who's boss. The starry is inclined to steal the points. Galvin again. Leaves himself over to that left hand. He's got to be first, and he's got to score when he launches his attacks. He's trying to move forward without real a real plan. That was more like it. He slipped away after scoring with one good left hand on the chin. Now, a few more of those before the final bell. If he can snatch this last round, he could win the contest. Turns his man and does nothing. Well, Starley has shown to us that he can take those punches, those heavy punches from Galvin. I thought that Galvin might have had a weight advantage here. But now, and now we await the decision of a close enough contest. That last round may have decided it. Starley may have aged that last round. We'll wait and see. And when the verdict was announced, Galvin was the narrow winner by nine points to eight. All right, then, uh, Mick Dowling, a look at that fight again. Uh, that was the second win, of course. The first win, in, in fact, on the night at middleweight for Ireland, but two middleweight wins for us in, for Ireland on the night. There's two good wins. That wasn't uh, one of Dennis Galvin's best performances. He was certainly very, very ring rusty. Dennis yeah. hasn't boxed for quite a while, but his first round in particular was very, very poor. He was doing a lot of swiping yes. uh, and an awful lot of missing. He gradually improved and finally got to grips with things, I think, in the third round, but it was as close as the score suggested there one yeah. single point. He is of course the former Irish champion. He is and he was anxious to get back uh, the fact that uh, his, his counterpart or his conqueror had yeah. won very impressively earlier on. Dennis was anxious to do well and I'm sure he'd be very relieved to get that one fight over him now. And what Dennis needs now is a lot more sparring and a lot more fights. You mm -hmm. could see that he was most certainly very, very ring rusty. Mm -hmm. All right, Mick, we're going to have a look at uh, another two fights coming up in a moment. Before we do that, uh, just maybe a quick word about what we can look out for. In Darren Corbett at uh, Super Heavy, we're also going to have a look at Paul Ferris, who was second up in the bill last night. Well, Darren Corbett is a very, very exciting super heavyweight. He boxed last year's National Senior Championships, was very exciting there, big puncher. So when Darren Corbett gets in here today, don't take your eyes off it because it doesn't last too long. Yeah. Uh, young Ferris is new to international boxing, uh, tried very hard, came to terms uh, with, with the, the job in about the third round but unfortunately had it, had it all to do going into the third. Mm -hmm. Mick, before we have a look at those fights, something else to watch out for this afternoon is the performance of uh, Des Smith in golf in the Madrid Open. He is now 14 under after 12, and he's leading by three shots at this stage. So we keep our fingers crossed for Des Smith going very well there in the Madrid Open. All right then, let's have a look at those two fights we've talked about. Darren Corbett, the super heavyweight, coming up. And after that, we see Paul Ferris and Alan Temple in the lightweight contest. And we join this fight in round two. Still doesn't take too many chances. Scores and then fades away. Ferris begins to look a little bit frustrated now in the second round. He's game, he's brave, he's willing to come forward. But each time he comes forward, there's an answer from Temple. Temple, a little bit more accurate all the time with his punching. And that's Ferris's only chance is to get in with one big punch like that. Just didn't get enough power behind it that time. But he's got to land a few of those to try and take the wind from the sail of Alan Temple. He's got to loosen him up a bit more. 
But Temple has been setting the pace here. So Ferris, his only chance is to come forward, but it can be very punishing coming forward. He brings in the big right hand of the chin. That's his only chance, is that big right hand. It's no matter how good Temple is, if you can put one good right hand on his chin, the whole contest will change. I think this fellow Temple is a bit too slippery for him. Well, there's no doubt about it. Ferris is giving it a try here. He's been outmaneuvered, outsmarted with punches, but he's still brave enough, hoping that he'll land the big one. He's landed a few good right hands and a few looping left hands too, but not enough to stop this fellow. So it looks as if Temple is forging ahead at the end of that second round. Paul Ferris, comparatively new to international senior boxing, opponent here, the more experienced Alan Temple. And so far in this contest, Alan Temple has been dictating the pace. He's been picking his man off well. But he must surely be ahead on points at this stage. So Ferris has got to do something very special in this last round. Ferris from the New Hill Club in Belfast. Runner-up last year in the Ulster Championships. Wasn't the original choice. In fact, uh, they hunted around quite a bit and went down the list of available lightweights before the hit on Paul Ferris. So he's a brave man to come here at such a short notice against a man who's in the peak of condition in Alan Temple. Alan Temple, a regular now on the English international team, only recently competed in the European Championships, former British champion. So he's got a lot of experience behind him. And this has been a very brave display by Ferris. And this last round, he's still not giving up. That's what he's trying to do, nail his man with a right hand. And the crowd urging him on in this last round, because that's the only way he can win this one now. And he lands with a big right hand. And Temple is forced to back away. Temple, who's been coasting along in this contest, looked as if he was winning it as he liked. He's getting a bit of a fright of this last round. Is it too late for Ferris? Ferris surely behind on points. But he's still trying for all he's worth. Slightly off target with that right hand. Uh, this is quite a finish by the Irishman Ferris. Who came into the, this last round trailing on points. He's giving it everything he has in this last round. But he may have punched himself out by this stage. Temple is cool. He got a bit of a fright earlier on in the round. But I think now he's collected his wits. And he's beginning to tidy up his boxing a bit more and there's the bell to the end of the final round and that was quite a comeback in the last round but I doubt if it's enough round one and this is the super heavyweight class these are the big ones Darren Corbett from the Holy Family Club in Belfast the Irishman here and Mike McKenzie the British ABA super heavyweight champion from Birmingham City Mike McKenzie Slip there. Referee says no count. These are two big punchers, and it could be first in will win. There's real weight behind those punches. Danny Corbett, fairly new to this level of boxing, but he did a lot of boxing in youth boxing, underage. 
won a few titles. Oh, he knows his way around. And that's it. It's all over. That's it. In the very first round, the first half minute of the first round, it's all over. The referee doesn't even bother to count. And a clear-cut win, Darren Corbett. And that's the end of the international. Yes, good night. And what an end that was. In spectacular style, the win there for Corbett. The only fight at the night which finished inside the distance. All right, Mick Dowling, looking back on those two fights, well, spectacular by all accounts. I mean, he maybe hasn't the physique of his opponent, but he certainly has a punch. Well, his, his supporters asked me not to mention his midriff, <laughs> so I won't mention his midriff. He does carry a little bit on it, but he can carry it very well. Yeah. He's a very exciting fighter, good puncher, really a big hitter. Mm -hmm. And he had a huge gang of supporters down last night from a little place called The Bone up in Belfast. The and Bone? They were the Bone. A yeah, place yeah. called The Bone. And they certainly got their money's worth, even though it only lasted a minute, 20 seconds. But he's a very exciting fighter. He's a tremendous record. Mm. He's had um, 17 contests. 14 of them have ended in the first round. Two of them have ended in the second round. Yes. And one single one went to points. Yeah. That's a very, very good record. Yes, he doesn't like to hang around too much, obviously. Well, we ask Wayne McCullough to settle down on his feet and put power in. That's the kind of power we'd be looking mm -hmm. for. But either you have that kind of power or you haven't got it, Darren Corbett has, yeah. and he's exciting. Mick, mention of another boxer on the bill last night at the National Stadium. This was uh, Tommy Waite from Belfast. And a difficult fight last night for Tommy mm -hmm. because he found himself caught up in the Shankill bombing last weekend. He then had to try and put that behind him and go into action mm -hmm. last night against uh, George Nisette. Well, yeah, Nisette was a very nice, clever boxer and it was a very, very close contest. But it was very difficult for Tommy to come down six days after d the bombing. I mean, six days ago he was ducking and diving on the Shankill Road and here mm -hmm. he is tonight ducking and diving punches from uh, a very, very slick opponent. Yeah, just to explain to people, Mick, um, Tommy has a fruit stall uh, near where the bombs ex bomb exploded uh, last Saturday. And he had been just at his lunch, in fact, and hadn't got back to his stall when the bomb went off. I just missed it very, very closely. But he's a nice, classy little fighter, very, very skillful fighter, doesn't have power, lacks power, but he makes up for it with the skill. He's a very, very skillful mover, nicely balanced, very clever all the time, picking punches, slipping and sliding. There he makes his opponent miss and fall to the ground. But Tommy, again, like them in McKenna, could do with a little bit more power. Yeah. Nice slick mover there, that's him in the red there now, just watching, pops out a jab, straight through the guard of George Nisette. Mm -hmm. There he is, he was glad, I'm sure, to hear the bell go because it's um, been a traumatic week for him and a very successful night now last night. Sure, yeah. Overall, 6-3 to Ireland on the night, but uh, a bit of a disappointing night from uh, many points of view, Mick. Well, first of all, I thought we would maybe get...